In video games, you're often presented choices. You can make evil or just plain wrong ones, and they can give you endings that are bad. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we're going to talk about 10 totally insane bad endings to video games. So some of these are traditionally bad in ways you'd expect, but they all come from player choice, and they're all uniquely crazy. I don't think I need to say this, but I am going to say it anyway. This is a list about video game endings, so be warned, spoilers. Starting off at number 10, it's Detroit Become Human. Quantic Dream, the developers of games like Heavy Rain, Indigo Prophecy, and the game we're talking about here, Detroit, loves downer endings. A big selling point of their games is how reactive they are and how the choices you make impact the narrative. They never quite are able to reach their lofty narrative ambitions, and a lot of the time, laughable stuff happens, but there's also a lot of stuff to like here, like the fact that everyone can die and you can get unique bad endings. In fact, they put so much effort into their bad endings, they're sometimes special secret bad endings, ones that aren't just normally bad, but are especially bad, and require you to make some specific choices during the game to actually see. Maybe the most devastating of them all is the Kamski ending, where you pretty much have to do everything wrong to get it. All three main characters have to completely fail at achieving their goals. You have to get Kara killed before she gets to the amusement park, Marcus has to die or get kicked out of Jericho, and Connor has to completely completely screw up his mission and get decommissioned. Remember, not even death is enough for Connor to fail in this game. He's the one working for the Robotics Corporation, so every time he dies, his mind just gets uploaded into a new body. Uh, you have to totally screw up to get him taken out of the story. Do all this, and it is not as easy as it sounds, and basically everything goes wrong for the androids. The uprising falls apart, and every android everywhere gets decommissioned, and future androids are reprogrammed so they'll never develop a consciousness again. Also, while you're hearing new about all this, you see Connor's partner Hank playing Russian Roulette. Considering that all three protagonists in the game are androids and Hank is a fan favorite character, that's pretty dark. It's not insane in like how outrageous it is, it's just really grim. At number 9 is Far Cry 3, switching for a game with lots of choices that affect the ending to a game where one choice affects the ending. I think, at this point, most of you guys are aware of how bizarre the bad ending to Far Cry 3 is, but it's still noteworthy enough to mention. Far Cry 4 and 5 have some pretty bad endings, depending on what you do, but there's something about how weird and sudden the ending of 3 is that makes it stand out. The basic plot of the game is you play as this dude bro named Jason, who's on a mission to rescue his friends from these mercenaries slash pirate guys who have taken over the Rook Island. It's a straightforward premise, but they do throw a lot of curveballs in there, like this whole thing where these tribal warriors called the Rock Yacht, who give you special powers with their tattoos uh, or, or something. I, I, don't, I don't really know how to describe it. Anyways, it's a weird game. In the final mission called Hard Choices, you enter this temple to find the Rock Yacht have kidnapped your friends again, and you're given the choice to rescue them or join up with Sintra, the leader of the Rock Yacht. Joining up with Sintra, means you kill your friends, by the way. The people you spent the entire game trying to rescue? Sure, they're kinda the, like douchey, I guess, but it seems a little extreme. And it is dark. You slit your girlfriend's throat, and then somehow things get stranger. Like, there's an intimate scene with Citra, who stabs you in the chest and says, you won. It's, it's a wild ending that is both nuts and very dark. And number eight is Fallout 3, which is a little less crazy regarding the contents of the ending and more crazy regarding what you actually do. It is an absolutely cartoonish act of evil that is hilarious in how dark it is. We're talking about the final decision in Fallout 3's campaign, not the decision in Project Purity, which before getting patched was insane in its own way, but the decision on where to target the orbital strike at the end of Broken Steel. In the final mission, Who Dares Wins, you attack the Enclave's final base, this giant mobile platform in Adams Air Force Base, and you're supposed to destroy it with an orbital strike. When you access the computer at the end, you get a bunch of options, and only two actually work. The Adams AFB platform, or the Citadel. You know, the Citadel where the Brotherhood of Steel are headquartered. The guys who have been helping you out the entire game. Those guys. And even though other Fallout games depict the Brotherhood as a lot more ambiguous, in Fallout 3, they're pretty much all around the good guys. And you can completely obliterate them if you so choose. It is 
pointless and cruel and immediately drops your karma level when you do it but at least you can poke around the remains their base you know the former pentagon after you do what makes this so insane is that throughout the entire game the enclave has been non-stop hostile to your player character and the brotherhood is basically all good in many missions they directly assist you in fighting the enclave the enclave are the bad guys full stop so the only reason you'd ever choose to side with them would just be basically for fun it's just funny to imagine a dude going through all the trouble of fighting dozens of enclave bad guys only to break into their main control room kill everyone inside and turn around and blow everyone up they were fighting with just 10 seconds ago it's a hell of a reversal of fortune and number seven is the Force Unleashed 2's Dark Side ending. It's kind of a toss up which game in the Force Unleashed series has the most ridiculous ending, but the original game's Dark Side ending is actually kind of cool, while the sequel one is just totally bizarre. So, for this list at least, that's what we're going with. It's safe to say that Force Unleashed 2 isn't quite as good as the original. It's shorter, the plot's a little thinner, it feels a little half baked, and that feeling applies to the ending as well. In the final mission, you battle Darth Vader at Kamino, which is kind of a step down compared to the first game where you also fight Darth Vader, but after wailing on him for a while, you get the option of either capturing him for the rebellion or killing him to get your revenge or whatever. So obviously the bad ending is killing him, but it happens with quite the twist. Just as Starkiller is about to deliver the final blow, he's suddenly stabbed through the chest by another Starkiller who mops up your rebellion allies. Then Darth Vader reveals that, oh, surprise, even though I said the cloning process was flawed before, actually it's not. Then he commands the clone to kill off the rebellion while your dude dies and sees that his girlfriend is dead as well oh yeah you're a clone in this game or maybe you're not i don't know they're never gonna make a sequel because lucas arts is six feet under now the whole thing's so sudden and dark that it's almost more funny than shocking at number six in mass effect 2 when everyone just dies it's everything Mass Effect 2 was building up to, the suicide mission. That's what the whole game is about, collecting a team that goes through the Omega-4 relay to attack the Collector base. During all the hype for the game, Bioware said it's possible to lose everything in this mission, and they were not kidding. Failing completely isn't exactly easy. You basically have to plan for it because it's actually kind of difficult to accomplish, but it can be done. You can go into the final mission so unprepared that you get everyone on your team killed, including yourself. To get this ending, you have to avoid doing as much as possible during the game. That means no loyalty missions and don't upgrade your ship shields. When you're in the mission proper, you have to select the worst possible people for each of the jobs. Like when you go through a section with a biotic barrier, use a character like Grunt instead of Miranda, stuff like that. Also bring unloyal people with you for the final push and leave your squishiest party members to defend you. And they'll pretty much all end up dead, along with Shepard who will die at the last moment. So if you manage to pull it off, everything you did in the game is pointless. You achieve achieve absolutely nothing and the trillions of dollars the elusive man spent to bring you back to life is wasted. Why anyone would go out of their way to get an ending like that, I, I don't know, but it's cool that it's possible. And number five is Spider-Man Web of Shadows. This ending depends on two critical choices in the game. The first is whether or not you bond the black suit to Black Cat. The second is whether or not you destroy the machine. It's not so much the choice as it depends on your alignment at the time. The black slash villain ending, Spider-Man controls the city with the power provided by the black suit with the help of a symbiote controlled Black Cat. Remember this game? It's a Spider-Man game created by Treyarch, like of Call of Duty Black Ops fame, with a gimmick of having a good slash evil meter that changes depending on how you play the game and what choices you make in the story. It's hardly the best Spider-Man game out there, but it's really interesting for what it is. Most people probably took the safe approach and kept Spider-Man a good guy, you know, because Spider-Man. But if you go down the evil route, then you're rewarded with a pretty wild ending. The ending you get is basically dependent on your alignment, but as far as I can tell, you have to also use the black suit on the black cat, otherwise the ending won't happen. At the end, after you defeat the Venom symbiote, a cutscene plays where basically Spider-Man says that he's the boss and is controlling all the infected people of New York now, including the Black Hat. Seeing Spider-Man as a total bad guy feels wrong, and you'd think the choices would be more like you'd get regular good guy Spider-Man or like an anti-hero Spider-Man, but if you go this route, he's kind of just straight up evil. So much so that the ending sees Black Widow teaming up with the Kingpin to take down evil Spider-Man. Like, they've even got Wolverine with his own symbiote, which isn't that much of a surprise. He's a boss fight earlier, but still, it's an ending that that sees the good guys and the bad guys team up to take down Spider-Man, which is pretty wild.
At number four is True Crime Streets of LA. We're kind of just putting this on here because the ending cutscene's hilarious. Even though True Crime is, I mean, in many ways, just a total GTA knockoff, it's got a lot of unique features about it, like this whole alignment system that can affect what ending you get. It's really low, and if you're a bad cop, then you get the worst final mission where you take one of the bad guys on the roof of this bank. Basically, you're already on the path to the bad end, but the ending we're talking about here is the bad, bad ending. If you manage to get killed during the the final battle on the roof then you see this cutscene where your guy hilariously wakes up mid fall and realizes he's falling to his death that's it your guy is dead he just goes splat on the pavement but somehow things get better as we hear none other than christopher walken's hard-boiled narration that's as goofy as it is confusing and to really add insult to injury he ends things by saying in the end i can only hope that eventually this story will be rewritten by the deeds of a more faithful cop until then I have only this to say. Uh, you blow it, schmuck. And number three is Zone of Ender's Bad Ending. A lot of people only remember Zone of Ender's as being the game with the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo disc, but it's a pretty interesting game in its own right. It's not like great or anything, but it is, like I said, interesting. And one of the most shocking and hilarious things in it is the bad ending, which you really have to work to get. I didn't even realize there was a bad ending until I started doing research for this list. Like, it is not easy to get normally, but it is wild. Uh, to get it, you basically have to destroy everything. Like, you have to destroy destroy every building and kill any survivor that you're not supposed to kill that you're supposed to be rescuing like you have to be so thorough in this when i say every building I, I mean every building if you do all that then head to mountain one after beating the different final boss you're contacted by your mission control thunderheart whose feed suddenly cuts out that's when your computer tells you he was killed by an explosion which was caused by you the computer literally says you killed him and then the game cuts to an ending screen which has a bunch of buildings on fire and your computer just says are you happy now like this is a game about a little kid piloting a giant robot and they hit you with that oh yeah you think you're just playing huh well sorry you killed your buddy by mistake nice going at number two is Persona 4, The Accomplice Ending. Persona 4 is an absolutely massive RPG with a huge part of it dedicated to finding out the identity of a serial killer stalking your idyllic town of Inaba. There's also a lot of hanging out with your friends and going into mine dungeons, but the central mystery of the game is finding the identity of the killer. It takes dozens and dozens of hours to get to this point, but eventually you have to make an accusation. Now, it's bad enough that you can actually screw up and pick the wrong person, but if you want to get a really, really bad ending, you have to figure out the true identity of the killer, but then side with them. Yes, you can side with the killer in this game and help keep their identity a secret. Why on earth anyone would choose this option other than just to see the ending, I, I don't know, but you can do it. There's a unique animated cut sequence and everything. It makes the end of the game incredibly anticlimactic, but if you want to end things this way, the option is open to you. And finally, at number one is Shadow of Destiny. This is another game all about choices. It's a time traveling adventure game released all the way back in 2001 for PS2. And while it's got a certain cult following, it is really goofy at times. Like the basic premise is that this guy named Ike is trying to prevent his own murder using time travel and is assisted by a, a dude named Homunculus. By traveling through time, you can solve puzzles and stop yourself from getting killed, all the while trying to figure out why you're in the whole situation in the first place. There's eight total endings you can get depending on what you do, but the worst, or at least the funniest, is ending C, where Ike kind of figures out what's going on, Homunculus takes back the time travel device, and then leaves you where you are. Everything seems standard enough so far, but for some reason, Ike decides to lay down in the middle of the street at night in the middle of the city. Okay, uh, like he's literally laying down on his back in the middle of the road, and then some dudes drive by in a car and he gets run over, and that is it. You're dead. It comes out, out of nowhere. I, I, I want to add, too, he's not like suicidal or anything. He just happily lays down in a road and gets run over. I guess it's supposed to be dramatic irony, but I, that doesn't make sense. Ike, right, buddy, this one is, this is on you. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.